Hi, I'm Jill Motzko, professor at Eastern Nazarene College. And today I'm going to talk about one of the many B-sides of James Clerk Maxwell, Maxwell's color science. So James Clerk Maxwell, I'm sure you're all aware of him, but just very briefly, um, he was born in Scotland and lived in Scotland and England uh, in the middle of the uh, 1800s. And he's most well known for Maxwell's equations. He, he, he unified um, electricity and magnetism into one set of equation, one set of equations. And then through that um, and through the wave equation, uh, he showed that, elect that light is an electromagnetic wave, um, which was demonstrated experimentally just so little, a uh, few decades later um, by Heinrich Hertz. Um, so this is probably where you're, or where you're most likely to have discussed Maxwell and his scientific work in your classes. Um, but he's also known for one of, uh, for many other things, but including his color wheel. So here in this photo here, I have a picture of Maxwell holding his color wheel or sometimes called his color top. Um, and he's also holding it in one of the statues that he, they have in the center of Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, so what is his color science and what's the story of what he produced and how he produced it? Um, so I'm going to talk about not just Maxwell's story, but also the, the steps or the substantial steps building up to Maxwell's story, right? So first I want to start off with Newton. Uh, feels like anything that has to do with physics has to start with Newton. Um, and then we're going to go over to Thomas Young, um, who uh, really built, uh, came up with the, the, the theory that Maxwell then built upon. And so it's important to also discuss Young. And then we'll talk about uh, Maxwell and, and his scientific work and, and what he produced. So Newton uh, is, is um, still re regarded as, as one of the greatest physicists of all time, if not the greatest physicist of all time. And so what did he think about colors? Um, so he, of course, had his optics, his treatise on light, and his idea of colors was that, um, well, he thought all light was different particles. And then for colors, he thought there were seven different types of particles. There are seven different types of colors. And so there were red colored light particles and there are blue colored uh, light particles, et cetera, et cetera. And that if you add them all together, you get white light. Um, but so he had this idea of colored photons or colored particles. Um, and, and, and so uh, what, more than a hundred years after him, we get to Thomas Young and he's most well known for his double slit experiment, right? For uh, really what, what we today look back on and say definitively proved that light was a wave. Um, although at that point he was ridiculed for disagreeing with Newton. Um, but, but so, uh, so he, he, scientists of his time had kind of a love hate relationship with him. I think it was more hate than love, uh, but, but Young has a, has a full story on his own. Um, but what I want to highlight today is that his, his theory about colors and specifically trichromatic vision. Um, for many years, people had discussed this, but um, Thomas Young was the first person to come up with a very clear, distinct theory uh, that the that colors are a full spectrum, a full continuum of different wavelengths uh, that come from the sun, that light can be any color depending on its wavelength. Um, but the human eye sees based on three colors. And that's because the human eye has three types of sensors, uh, one for red, one for, uh, one for red, one for yellow, one for blue. Um, and so this is why the human eye sees in kind of three colors, uh, even though light itself is in a continuum. And so Maxwell um, took Young's theory of trichromatic vision and ran with it. Um, he accepted Young's theory and he began to do, uh, or he did experiments to kind of show whether Young's theory was true or not. And so firstly, he started working with the color wheel or the color top. Um, and so this had been around for hundreds of years before Maxwell, but Maxwell was the first person who really studied this systematically. So the idea was that you could take a circle and you could put in 
two or three different colors on different parts of the circle. And then if you take the circle and you spin it fast enough, then it looks like all the colors are blending together. And then you can look at what color it's blending into. Um, so what Maxwell's, one of his, his key ideas is that he actually took these colors and he put them on pieces of paper that could be very finely adjusted so that you can very carefully um, uh, and precisely uh, change the ratios of the different colors and you can change out different uh, colors for different other colors. Um, he even made a, an inner radius that had a smaller radius and then uh, colors that had a larger radius. So you could have the inside spinning would be one color and the outside spinning would be a different color. Um, and it is just incredible, these, these experimental apparatus that he came up with. Um, and so he very systematically looked at these different colors and how they blended and what they looked like. Um, but Maxwell was actually not satisfied uh, with uh, the spinning color top. And so he decided um, to take a step further and make a color box. And so in this color box, um, it actually has three slits uh, over here on the left. And you have a prism, here's a diagram here in blue. There's a prism over here that has separated out the colors. And with the slits, you can actually move the slits. So you can choose specifically which wavelength you want to allow into the box. You can make them wider or, or thinner so you can control the intensity of that color. Um, and then the colors would combine over here on a mirror and then reflect out through the bottom. And so then you would see the blended color. And you would know by controlling the slits, you could precisely control exactly what wavelengths and what intensity of the wavelengths that would come in. And then there was also a white light that would come in through some mirrors. It would also come in and, and you would see it through the bottom. And so the observer would look in through the bottom hole and they would see two different colors of light. And the idea, um, uh, well, his experiment was primarily uh, combining these three different colors and getting them to exactly match white light. Uh, and so he uh, very carefully uh, did these measurements on himself and also his wife uh, with a variety of different colors. Um, apparently stories are that his neighbors just stared at him looking this black box. And actually in Maxwell's house, he had a color box that was eight feet long. Um, and so his neighbors thought he was looking at a coffin, which is very interesting <laughs> indeed um, uh, for hours at long uh, at a time. Um, but so he came up with these incredible results uh, of uh, very precise numbers. And this is just one of the pages uh, out of his paper uh, listing um, what uh, intensity of different wavelengths you have to add in order to get white light. Um, and so he pulled this all together and he was able to calculate the color triangle uh, very precisely. So the color triangle had also been around before Maxwell, um, but it was uh, mostly theoretical, but he was the first person to put on quantitative ground of precisely this is where that color goes and that's where that color goes. Uh, what happens as you blend the blue, green, and red. And so Maxwell presented all this in 1961. Um, uh, he had, had this an incredible systematic study uh, of the three color vision and showing that uh, the human eye sees in these three colors and how it combines these three colors. Um, but he decided that he also wanted to have a demo. Um, and so uh, the story is he actually uh, worked with a professional photographer, Thomas Sutton, and he, they took a picture, uh, they took three pictures of the same multicolored ribbon, uh, one with a red filter, one with a green filter, one with a blue filter. Uh, and then when he made his presentation at the conference, um, he actually uh, showed these pictures uh, through blue light, uh, green light, and red light. And then he had them overlap on over, overlap with each other on the screen, and you could see a multicolor color image. And so this is this is actually the first color photograph, um, and it's 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 pretty incredible that he came up with this. So he was presenting not just all of this scientific knowledge and development that he had come up with, uh, but he also gave the audience this very concrete demonstration of um, uh, just clearly demonstrating that the human eye depends on three colors. 
Um, there's a really interesting story about this red filter and, and how it's actually UV versus red, uh, but I don't have enough time to get into that uh, today. All right, so to conclude, I want to just point out a couple of things that we can learn, and especially that you can teach your students about the nature of science uh, through this story of Maxwell's color science. And the first one is that scientific progress is influenced by the existing state of knowledge. Right? And, and, and this and, and the next statement are from the nature of science declarations from the NSTA. Um, but it's, it's very clear that Maxwell did not do this entirely on his own. Uh, he built his work and his experiments uh, on the color theory of Thomas Young, right? So uh, he did not do this, uh, as I say, no man is an island. So he didn't just do this by himself, but he was able to continue the work of Thomas Young and who was in kind of conversation with Isaac Newton's work as well. Um, and so um, there's definitely an existing bit of knowledge there and there's people that have come before and scientific progress continues to push um, uh, based on that. And a second point that I'd like to make is creativity is vital in the production of scientific knowledge. Uh, when you look at Maxwell's story, it's so just amazing that he was so creative to come up uh, with these different experiments. Um, to design and invent these different experimental apparatus, um, uh, and then to even come up with this color photo that would so clearly demonstrate his work. Um, uh, and so the scientific knowledge and the production of scientific knowledge and our continued progress is not just about just grinding through the data and doing the experiments, which obviously Maxwell did as well. He spent hours just collecting numbers, collecting data. Uh, but uh, creativity was an essential component of his work as well, just coming up with these new, just radical, uh, cool ideas, uh, really. And, and, and that is uh, absolutely essential to science and the continued progress of science. So I hope you really enjoyed uh, this discussion about James Clerk Maxwell's, uh, one of his B-sides, uh, color science. And I hope this is valuable for you uh, as you continue uh, to teach in physics and also to learn in physics.